Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In the studio to discuss the fascinating facts of Polish history, I'm joined again by Professor Krzysztof Jabonka. Professor, thank you for joining us again. Mm -hmm. Let's, we've, we've been looking at the Polish-Ukrainian relations in the 19th century, mm -hmm. but if we can move now to the interwar period between mm -hmm. the First and the Second World War, how did Polish-Ukrainian relations look at that time? Was there any representation, for example, of Ukrainians mm -hmm. in, the, in the new Polish political structures? Although the alliance between Simon Petlura and Józef Piłsudski was unsuccessful, it was necessary to return to the pre-war borders, at least partially. Poles treated separately Galicia, so the area which was under Austrian annexation, where there was no Russian influence, and separately the area which was detached from the Russian Empire, that is Volynia. In Volynia there was a representative of Piłsudski, Henryk Józewski, who conducted a very mild policy. For example, all residents, and particularly the young people of Volynia, were able to study in Ukrainian. That was the language of the area. It was even supposed that Piłsudski assigned the area to be given back to Ukraine once it became independent. In Galicia, however, it was a bit different, as Ukrainians there were, to put it mildly, a slightly higher level of political organization. They had a national democracy party called UNDO, but also a number of other social parties, such as the peasant parties, which had full freedom. The only thing they lacked was territorial autonomy, and that is what the Poles feared the most, because Germans would immediately demand a similar one on the western border, and this would be tantamount to the bursting of the state. Then it was agreed that Ukrainians would settle for what they were given, at least for the time being, and Poles would not apply repression against them. However, there appeared a party, subsidized by German Abwa, which had the task to break this alliance. It was the so-called Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, a party which essentially called itself nationalist and had fascist features. The party tried to spoil Polish-Ukrainian contacts, and the better they were, the more assassinations were organized to provoke repressions from Poland, because the worse the Ukrainians were, this party was doing better. Its leader was officer Yevhen Konovalet, and when Soviet agents murdered him using an explosive device planted in a box of chocolates in Rotterdam, the faction split into two subgroups. One of them was led by Andriy Melnik. They were more similar to the intelligentsia, while the other, led by Stepan Bandera, was more populist and radical. The latter group was clearly hostile and had fascist characteristics. For instance, they carried out an assassination attempt on the Polish minister, Bronisław Piracki, on Warsaw's Foxhall Street, which was later named after him. That act led to repressions being forced on Ukrainians. One of the consequences of the assassination attempt on Bronisław Piracki was Piłsudski's consent to the so-called Czerezwyczajka, or Cheka, repressive Soviet secret police, or the establishment of a concentration camp for Ukrainians in Bereza Kartuska. In no way did this camp resemble later camps created by the Germans, it was truly an isolation camp, but people were not murdered there. Its biggest fault was the fact that one could be sent there for up to three months without going through a trial. People were sent there just like that, as a preventive measure for those who were suspected of any actions. Although some of the people who were caught for the preparation of this assassination attempt were sentenced to death, none of them ended up being executed. All of them were sent to prisons and were released in 1939. They were the most anti-Polish group, which led to the terrible massacre of over 120,000 Poles in Volynia and Podolia in 1933. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for on this episode, so it remains for me to say thank you, Professor. Thank you. And thank you for watching, and do join us again on Poland Daily History.